Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Go All Out uh, Inclusive Outdoors Week uh, webinar series. We're delighted to be joining you for today's event. My name is Tomas Edward. I'm a lecturer at uh, the Munster Technological University down here in Kerry. And I have had the pleasure and honor of working with CARA for a number of years um, and supporting them in their adapted programs. So I'm delighted to be joined today by James Murray, who's the Sports Inclusion Development Officer for Clare Local Sports Partnership, by Kieran Murphy, who's the Inclusion Officer from Irish Sailing, and from Owen Hogan, the Rural Recreation Officer with the Clare Local Development Company. So today we're going to discuss two different uh, inclusive outdoor projects, one based on the water and one land-based, that are taking uh, place in County Clare. Uh, and so our guest panellists are going to be uh, uh, discussing those, explaining those, and uh, helping us to get a, a better understanding. We might go to each of you for an introduction and a background to yourselves and the audience, but we might start with uh, James and then we'll go to Kieran and then to Owen. So James, uh, you're very welcome. Maybe you could tell us a, a little bit about your role as Sports Inclusion Development Officer and about how these two projects came together. Thanks very much, Tomas, um, for having me on the webinar. Um, it's a great idea. And um, I, I suppose from, from my perspective, um, I'm, a, I'm a sports inclusion disability officer or a development officer, as, um, and, and, and the name can vary, you know, depending on what part of Ireland you're in. Um, I'm in the job 15 years, and I came in with the background of having cerebral palsy. I'm a former... Paralympian. Um, I've been to three Paralympic Games and played soccer for Ireland. So I don't come with the normal um, health and leisure and adapted physical activity um, background. I come from having having a disability and having that experience and understanding what people um, with disabilities need and want. Um, so that's a little bit of background about uh, around myself. Um, in relation to the actual two projects, um, for us in Clare, we're I suppose we're a tourist county. We'd like to we'd like to consider ourselves as, as a tourist county, um, but also um, a water-based county. Um, as in, from my own home place, next stop, pretty much New York, from five minutes walk from the beach. Um, so it was a natural thing for us here in Clare to get involved in two projects, where um, um, number one sailing project. Um, we're we're involved with Kilrush Marina, and um, it was great to be able to work with them, but also collaborate with a national governing body like Irish Sailing and a very, I suppose, forward thinking um, governing body um, that would allow and um, would allow us to be involved with them um, in relation to developing and um, I suppose, try to prototyping um, technology that would allow children with disabilities to participate initially in water sports and then hopefully moving on then to other sports and we're in I suppose hopefully the first phase of that Kieran is going to give you some more detail in relation to that um, the second project um, is where we're involved with um, Owen um, who works for Clare Local Development Company but his job title is he's a rural recreation officer so basically Clare is a very rural county with a lot of walks and trails um, and the big issue for us is really around accessibility so how can people with disabilities ex access and you know and how can we make those trails accessible and again Owen being very forward thinking um, came to us with the idea of okay how can we make those um, accessible and using a piece of um, technology and again Owen after Kieran will talk to you about um, those two projects in, um, in greater detail. Fantastic thanks very much uh, over to Kieran so Good morning, Thanks, Kieran. Thomas. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for inviting me. Delighted to be involved with this great program. Um, I've been an outdoor pursuit instructor for a good while now, maybe 30 odd years or so, and uh, worked around the country doing outdoor pursuits. And in the last 12 years, I've been working for Irish Sailing, the national governor body for sailing, windsurfing and powerboating in Ireland. And uh, one of my main functions is diversity and inclusion. And over the years, we've worked in partnership with Clare Sports Partnership, and it's been fabulous different programs. And uh, recently, uh, during COVID, I was actually out sailing at the back of Aran Islands, and we bumped in, not physically bumped into John Sweeney, but met up with him 
on, on Aaron and we had a great chat about this new idea that uh, the Dormant Accounts Funding had created some funding to look at innovation and technology and how you can enhance technology to encourage people uh, that don't normally get an opportunity to participate in sport and we were delighted to, to work together and, and see where this project would go. Brilliant. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, over to you, Owen. Uh, so I'm Owen Hogan, so the Rural Recreation Officer for County Clare. So that job I involved managing um, most of the recreation within the county. So that's generally walking trails, cycling trails, and it's the, the management, the promotion, promotion of those. And then we manage the walk scheme within, within County Clare. This project is kind of a, a phase two of a project we worked on already where we developed what was called a, a trail management system. So uh, we have to, we have a system for managing the trails and also monitoring the different trails. So at the moment, this is kind of a paper-based system where you would use it, use a pen and paper to record the issues on, on you, you find on a trail. And then you, you, you then again, using pen and, pen and paper, you, you, you would uh, record when you fix them and how, how that will be inspected then on the annual inspections from the, the National Trails Office. What we did was we developed a, a, an app and a, a website back end so we're involves involves uh, trail managers or volunteer trail wardens going out and inspecting the trails and then using an app recording the issues which is all sucked up in, 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 into a, a back end then which the trail manager like myself can then use to manage so an evolution of that one was was then the uh, cara um, uh, report and, and project that they started with terms of a guide to accessibility for outdoors and i went on the that the, the one day course for that found a very very good course but I just saw the potential in using using the, the report that they had developed and also using the, the functionality of an app to, to make that even more efficient. So I'll just share a screen here for a second. So in terms of the summary of the system at the moment, so we, we have the, uh, uh, it's a, a portable system using to record, record your trails using your smartphone, your applet, uh, app. It's a digital system, so it's no paper-based system anymore dig with digital maps in the background. We also use the phone's GPS to record the location of, of, of any issues that we find. And that's obviously more time efficient and more efficient system than, than the existing paper-based system. Uh, we, we do it in term, terms of using surveys. So basically we've taken the, uh, the publication from CARA and we developed each, each, each of the surveys into a dig, digital survey. Uh, each, you can have multiple surveys for, for different places. So you, could, you can have greenways, we can have beaches, we, we can have trails on each, each each, each first section has a different, different survey. This short short video will, will show you how this system works. Using the GPS, the, the, the app brings up the location of, of, of where you are. Once you select a survey for a location, you, you select the survey that, that you're interested in progressing. Parking, for example, in this, this area. So we're going to do a, do a, a parking at the digital hub in, in Estime as, as an example. We can select the parking, parking spaces, is there accessible parking spaces, and then the size of the parking spaces. And we can add notes into that, into that section as well. Once you, can, you, you, once you fill in this information, you can then add a photograph. So this is a photograph of, of the parking spot. You save that photograph, and then that gets, that gets added to the survey. There and that's geolocated using 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 your using your the GPS in your phone. That shows you exactly where that lo location is. That's fantastic, Owen. That's really smart technology and building it around uh, a smartphone that you know I think it's over eighty percent of the population have at this time. Uh, it's really really good work. Fantastic. Well, and I'll just finish up with this. So then we've got a digital backend then. So all, all the service gets to get, get put in, into a web page where you can then manage your different service as you know. So there's an example of an assignment with all your, your, your different, different service. And uh, you can then, then, you've got a record of those forever. You can also use the system to, to assign tasks. So if you have a, if you wanted to fix an accessibility issue that you've noted in the system, you can assign the task of fixing that to, it could be one of the workers within your company or a contractor, and you can manage that, that contract then and then move that out. Uh, in terms of the, the, the output of the report, then you've got, obviously got your, your digital reports that you use using the system, and then they can be re reproduced as a hard report. So the, the output will look the exact same as the reports that are in the, uh, the manual that were produced by CARA. That's the contact details there for the moment. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much, Owen. Fantastic. Well, I might call call on to um, Kiran next, maybe to tell us about the the sailing project. Over to you, Kiran. 
Thanks very much, Tomas. So the Sailing for All project was a concept that was created with um, a group of sailors, John Sweeney, uh, as we mentioned already, and there was a, an, another family, the Dodd family, where uh, they had two children who had autism and are non-verbal, and they were actually out at the sailing event themselves. They had, um, through life, had huge challenges in trying to get uh, their sons to integrate in sport, but with determination and with development of technology, they found um, apps that they were able to develop to help verbalize or help communicate how they were feeling, how they wanted to do things. And then they were able to manipulate that software to facilitate social skills, like things like saying, I'm hungry, I want to go to bed, or things like saying education and how they learn. And now what we're looking at is developing that type of software to facilitate how people engage with sport. So the concept is that we're using technology to bring into the person's natural environment at their home, at their school, and it shows them what the sport is, is about and they can engage with the platform to change the colours, to change the settings, to change the voices that they're comfortable with. And it gives them an opportunity to learn about sport in their own environment before they actually come down to the marina or the pontoon and then go sailing. The app itself then will develop to facilitate how that person communicates on board so that they can be telling the people we want to go left we want to go right we want to do this and it's a two-way communication system using technology and the facility is uh, using that technology to enhance from a sporting perspective rather than the traditional educational model that would be used in the school brilliant that's great fantastic and so creative yeah, absolutely. Um, the the innovation is amazing. Like we're we're currently at um, implementing the the first phase of the development, and it, it's um, incredible the different benefits that we're actually finding as a as a user group for everyone, not just for people with autism or or, or with um, nonverbal communication. That 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 different ways of how people learn and enjoy engaging with learning in sport will actually find this useful. So there's a huge universality approach to this as well, while focusing in on one target group around communication and how people learn. Very good. Well, that's the that's one of the key principles, isn't it? That um, inclusive design for learning uh, is good for everybody, not, uh, not just one particular group in society, but it makes it things uh, easier and more accessible for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. The participant is at the centre, but everyone, the coach, the instructor, the family, siblings are all benefiting as well in the journey and the experience. So it's really positive. So maybe if I can maybe call on, on everybody to, to get involved for, the, for our last few minutes here. So <clears throat> bringing technology and the outdoors together in, the, in this uh, area is, uh, is maybe unusual because sometimes people think about going outdoors is about detaching yourself from technology. But it's really interesting to see with both projects uh, that you're actually using um, technology to prepare people for, for engagement in the outdoors and in the case of the trails to make the outdoors a better experience. Have people any ideas about where you might go to next in County Clare with this approach? Throwing that question at me, Tomas, looking at the natural resources that Clare have, um, one is the water, and um, two then is our is our natural environment of trails, and people would consider you know a wonder of the world, cliffs of Moher, and going for a walk, um, and oh, I suppose moving a little bit inland and using our trails. Um, for me. As of right now, we have a lot in our hands in in trying to work with these two projects and you know get get these I suppose um, ready to move beyond Clare, you know get them moving across Ireland and hopefully even um, even worldwide. Um, so at the moment, I would say no, but it is a very interesting question at the same time. Great, thanks, thank you, James. 
Yeah, from our side, I think what we're focusing on is a kind of a, this kind of citizen science approach now is that, that well, we, we have a system in, in the background. We have kind of an app that people can use. But if you don't have the app on your phone when you're out on the trails, obviously you, you can't engage. So what we're looking at is, is having um, uh, signs or information plates along the trails that will have a, 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 an NFC chip or a QR code on it that people will be able to link into the system and report back trail issues as, as they find them. So it'll be like, like a, a web page interface into the system rather than needing a fully functioning app. So it'll be a very small basic version, but it's the simple things of, you know, a style's broken, a sign's broken, or even accessibility issue on the trail that they can report back. And the system in the background will know that if it's in County Clare, that issue goes to Owen Hogan as the RO. If it's in Donegal, it goes to Inga Bok, the RO there, basically just by geo geofencing the, the, the locations in there. So that's the type of thing that, that we're, we're looking at growing the system to. Brilliant. And Kieran, do you think your your system could be adapted for uh, paddle sports or for rowing? Yeah, yeah absolutely, Tomas. Like, um... We, we've started and I, I probably wouldn't be the first sport of all the water sports. Sailing can be quite complex where stand up paddle boarding or kayaking may be a little bit easier for people to initially engage with. But we, we, well, we went all out and, and uh, said, let's, let's go for something really challenging. But definitely we see this product being developed across water sports and other sports, gymnastics, badminton, that there's, there is the capacity for this tappable platform for the, the, the end user to facilitate what they want their environment to look like, sunny or dark. They want their parents' voice or they want a, a, a boy's voice um, or they want different colours. Um, and they are a part of, of creating the journey themselves. So it has huge capacity to go across other sports. Well, I, ha I have to say congratulations to all three of you. And I have to say with some bias, as I sit here in County Kerry, it is great to see innovations like this in the West of Ireland. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so part of the theme for the Go All Out uh, uh, week is about encouraging activity providers to explore and develop their awareness and delivery of different programs around the country. Maybe can I ask each of you what advice you'd give to providers uh, who either have signed up for the um, the program or are currently watching this and considering be more inclusive? Would you have one or two key points that you'd make? We might go to James first. I would say, Tomas, get in touch, reach out. Um, it's that simple, you know, communication and that collaboration and finding out uh, more information about something. Um, if you have a lack of information, the only way that you can find out about it is by reaching out. Brilliant. Thanks, James. Uh, Kieran? Um, I, I would agree with James there. Say to discuss with the individual, with the participant beforehand, see, see what they like doing, see what they're nervous about, and that discovery of their fears and uh, how, how they feel beforehand. And then the other little piece would be just try one thing different. Uh, don't overdo it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just try one simple thing for yourself, a little bit of a challenge, a bit of discovery, and then build on that. Brilliant. Thanks. Owen? Yeah, and I, uh, based on the same team, I would say just in terms of getting in touch, there's uh, 17 rural recreation officers across Ireland. Uh, five have just been appointed in, in, the, in the last four months. Uh, so they are the, the central kind of hub in each county for trails and the outdoors. And if you're gonna contact them, they'll point you in the right direction. Fantastic. And might I also ask if people have advice for somebody with a disability who may be watching this and considering trying something new in the outdoors, what recommendations would you make to encourage people to, to get out in their own locality? I suppose for me, Tomas, if you're in Clare, you're more than welcome to contact um, me. And I know Philippa will, will put up my details after um, uh, this is finished. But I would say initially, if you're a little bit unsure, I would say contact Cara. Um, they would have a list of all the sports inclusion disability officers across the country um, in your local area. And, and not, so, not even your own local area. If you are going away on holidays, you know, and you want to try um, some, something different in another county, you know, it's also good to know um, um, where, uh, what, what counties are, what activities are in different counties. Fantastic. Cheers. Kieran? I'd say go all out. Uh, go for it. Just do, does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, if you're 
and a car park in Lahinch and you're looking at somebody surfing, just go up to the van and talk to the lads. Um, if you're walking around and you see a trail, ch- check it out and try it. By going to that actual point of contact where a person is engaged with the outdoors and just have that discussion, that person will be more than happy. And at a stage where there's no one there, uh, whether it's surfing or canoeing or sailing, um, contact the national governing body. There's an inclusion officer at every sport for the country and they'll know locally who's a good person to go to, to just join up the dots to help you get out there. Good advice. Thank you. Owen. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, um, uh, following on Kieran said, I think there, a lot of the trails are accessible already. Maybe not 100% the complete trail accessible, but but a lot of, a lot of the trails are even, even, you know, the start of trails are the, the first 30, 40% of, of a trail. So go ahead and try that. Um, another project we worked on a couple of years ago in trails, we put the, uh, a number of the trails on the, on Google Maps. So within the Google Trekker, we took the Google Trekker along the Cliffs of Moher, the Lockavala Trail, uh, and so you can actually click on click on the Google Maps, look at, at the trail location, and then you can see a photograph, a 360 degree photograph of the actual trail itself. So that'll give you an idea of what the train looks like in advance of going there. So before we wrap up, uh, we've been asking uh, each of our webinar participants, what is their favourite uh, place in the outdoors to visit in Ireland? Uh, maybe something that inspired them or somewhere that people might check out. So can I go around the house and ask each of you? So. Owen? Um, my favourite trail would be the Lockavala Trail in, in the Burren. Um, so it's a small family-owned trail. It's nine kilometres long. There is a, a family. Uh, you get all, all the kind of varieties of, of, of the Burren. You've got the views of Mullockmore Mountain from it. The local family have their own little, little community cafe at the end of it where they'll, they'll make, make, a, they make a cakes from their goat, goat herd, from the goat milk. They've got teas and coffee, coffees there that, 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 you, that you can have. So uh, that would be my, my suggestion. Wow. Fantastic. James? For me, um, excuse the pun, I would say a GA field, but um, that is the outdoors. Um, that would be that would be my extracurricular activities. But no, um, I suppose looking at the outdoors for me, um, going to home and I um, my home house is in uh, close to water and there's a beach called Seafield, um, very much like like Inch Beach that you can drive down onto. And I love mixing walking and the water by having the pair of sharks and walking walking along the water there. Um, um, it's a really, really nice beach, especially in summertime. Fantastic. Sounds great. Kieran. Uh, I have to say uh, County Clare and uh, I love Lakeside Campsite in Mount Shannon. It's a beautiful place on the lake, really accessible. I love camping there. It's safe. But everything's there. You you have the holy island. You have eagles in the trees on the islands, um, and just all the water sports are there. There's great canoeing, sailing, windsurfing, powerboating, and then the trails along for cycling and walking. It's, it just can't be better. Wonderful. Okay, folks, thanks very much. Well, I've really enjoyed speaking with you all today, and thank you for sharing uh, your knowledge and your advice for our audience. Uh, I, I hope you get to enjoy the activities that you might be facilitating as part of the Go All Out week. And, uh, and thank you to you, our audience, for, for joining us today. I hope you found it valuable. Uh, if you've any more questions or uh, you want to know more about it, you can always check out the Cara Sport Inclusion Ireland webpage. Uh, there's a registration for events there, and you can find out what's going on near you.